Over the past two years, I've spent a lot of time and energy thinking about the Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku commercial. Once your pizza is delivered, have some fun with Miku. That commercial is still to this day my favorite YouTube video of all time, which is why it's hard to process that my documentary about its disappearance has now received more views than the original video did. But for all the discussion we've done of the commercial itself, one thing that we've spent remarkably little time talking about is the app. Which is a little strange if you think about it. The whole point of the ad we fell in love with, the ad that brought Scott, president of Domino's Pizza, into our lives, the point of it was to advertise this iOS app, Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku. Now, in part, the reason you haven't seen me talk much about this app before is because it's gone now. Like all 32-bit iOS applications, the app disappeared completely from the App Store when Apple discontinued support for them, so at this point, the app is dead. As a matter of fact, when this promotion ended, Domino's went to great lengths to bury all of it. And that original commercial wasn't the only victim. If you've watched the commercial as many times as I have, then you no doubt remember the part where Scott mentions the amazing Vocaloid songs have been created with the fantastic imagination of the crews from all over Japan. And those songs really were made. Like Scott says, the challenge was successfully carried out. And each of those songs were uploaded to the Domino's Japan YouTube channel as standalone music videos. But now, most of those videos are gone. To recap here, Domino's removed the commercial, removed most of the music videos from the campaign, and they even removed the beautiful miku.dominos.jp website created in celebration of the promotion. Now, as sad as all of these things' disappearances are, the website, fortunately, is one of the few things that we still have a backup of, all thanks to the heroes at the archive.org internet archive. See, archive.org, God bless them, still have a nearly complete capture of the website as it stood back in 2013, and virtually all of its interactivity is still intact. Even today, this website is incredible. It runs down the application's full feature set, has images of the Hatsune Miku branded pizza boxes and delivery moped that they created, and even has a little Miku that pops up from behind the page as you're scrolling down. By the way, I did a little digging, and it turns out the hidden PNG of Miku here has some disembodied fingers that you can't normally see, so... I guess at one point she was supposed to look like she was peeking over the edge of the page using her hands, but that didn't make it into the final cut. Consider that an obscure Miku discovery. Call me Super Miku Broth. Anyways, for years now, this website provided by archive.org has been the closest you can get to revisiting the Miku app's glory, since the app is now, again, completely dead. But what if it wasn't? What if the app wasn't dead? What if there was a way to engage in some vocaloid necromancy and bring Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku back from beyond the grave? This is an idea I'd contemplated before over the years, but the first time I really began taking it seriously was back in November when I received an Instagram message from a kid who goes by the name Brick. Brick told me that he and his friends were attempting to get their hands on the Miku app by any means possible, and that their plan was to attempt to use an iPhone 4S and a Japanese iCloud account to do it. Now, when I heard from Brick, I was impressed. This was the first I'd heard of anybody actually trying to jump through all the necessary hoops to revive the app, so I offered to help them out. And as it turns out, I personally had a very important piece of the puzzle to bring back the Miku app. See, as noble as Brick's attempts to get the app were, him and his friends needed some assistance. As we all know, the app is gone now, meaning that you can't just take an old 32-bit iPhone and go download it from the App Store the usual way. But, despite Domino's removing the app from the App Store, it turns out that the code for the Domino's app is still hosted on Apple's servers just sitting there. And with a little bit of trickiness, we can access that. See, way back in 2013, when the Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku first came into being, I fell in love with the commercial right away, and naturally my instinct was to set up a Japanese iTunes account, switch to the Japanese app store, and install onto my phone Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku. And in hindsight, this decision I made seven years ago to impulsively download the app turned out to be the linchpin of this entire operation. Because the moment I installed that app, that was the moment that Apple assigned me a license for the app, allowing me to re-download it infinitely. Now, there was still a major issue. Because of its age and because of how it was developed, this app could only be installed on an older iPhone that supported 32-bit applications. That hasn't been true of iPhones for years now. Slowly I realized that if I was going to get my hands on this app, I only had one option. Out of options and desperate for some sort of resolution, I knew what I had to do. So I went to eBay and bought myself an iPhone 5 in search of answers. Eventually, that iPhone 5 arrived, and I was thrilled. And not only because the iPhone 5 is hands down the best iPhone Apple has ever designed, 
by a long shot, not even close. I mean, look, look at these chamfered edges. But no, the reason I was excited was because if everything went according to plan here, we could be about to boot up the Domino's app featuring Katsune Miku for the first time in seven years. Excitedly, I charged up the phone, connected to the internet, signed in, opened up my past purchases, and frantically typed in the four most important letters in the English language. And lo and behold, there she was. Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku with a big, beautiful re-download button sitting right next to it. Now, I was overjoyed, but cautiously so. For some reason, a part of me still felt convinced that somehow this wasn't going to work. I knew that despite how far we'd come, all it would take was one error message to halt this whole operation dead in its tracks. At the same time, getting this far was promising. So I had to try. I pressed the download button and... Nothing happened. The icon spun in place, seemingly thinking about working, but the download did not start. A lump formed in my throat. Were we too late? Had we waited too long? Maybe Apple had cleared all the old 32-bit applications off their servers. It would, it would make sense. I sat there, unblinking, staring at this icon, and then, right when I really started to freak out, the download began. And before I even had time to react, it was done. And that download progress indicator shifted into the word open. My hands were shaking. I couldn't believe this was happening. I pressed the open button, turned up my speakers, and then... I cannot describe how good this felt. That sound, the Domino Pizza jingle from the commercial, seemed at the time like the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard in my life. I opened the app and began exploring, and as I did, I began to feel... Domino's Pizza crew from all over Japan. Overwhelmed. Which felt a little silly, because technically, none of this was new to me. I had, of course, opened this app before, long ago, but... When I first started up this app seven years ago, I didn't yet know the effect that Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku was going to have on my life. I didn't know that the app's commercial would end up eventually being my favorite YouTube video ever, and I definitely didn't know that one day I'd end up flying to Tokyo and visiting Domino's Japan HQ in search of answers, or that that first trip visiting Tokyo in search of answers would be followed by many, many more. So yeah, to hold the app that started all of this in my hands again, it got to me. Eventually, I continued exploring every nook and cranny of the app. Some parts of the app worked, and some of them didn't. <laughs> Tragically, the augmented reality camera, arguably the app's flagship feature, would just crash every time I opened it. Unfortunately, the same thing would happen to me with the app's music player, meaning the songs from the YouTube videos that Domino's demolished were not accessible through this method. Most interesting of all, and you might have spotted this before, there was a recurring error message in Japanese that popped up over and over that I couldn't read. Lucky for me, my roommate was born in Japan and is fluent in Japanese, so I brought the message to her. Hey Noelle. Yeah. Can you read some Japanese for me? Sure. All right. Tell me what this says. Internet ni nan to ka sarete imasen. You're not connected to the internet. <laughs> but I am. This error was baffling to me. Obviously, I was connected to the internet as I'd just used the internet to download this app minutes earlier. But after nosing around in the app a little bit more, I soon began to suspect that this error message was a misnomer. That it wasn't the connection to the internet that was the problem, but the connection to a specific server. In all likelihood, a Domino's server that has long since shut down. In essence, the Domino's app has always online DRM. It is truly the Diablo 3 of pizza ordering apps. Despite these shortcomings, the mission seemed like a success. I now had the app. But I'm just one man, one point of failure standing between Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku and the app fading back into obscurity. I knew that I needed to do everything in my power to ensure that Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku lives on forever, that even if Apple yanks it from their servers someday, it's still out there circulating around the internet for eternity. 
So I reconnected with Brick and together we managed to extract the app as an IPA file, which is Apple's proprietary file format for iOS apps. Now this was major for two reasons. One, it's the first step in getting this app back in the hands of the general public where it belongs. And two, it enables us to crack the app wide open and take a look at what's inside. See, as it turns out, IPA files are just zip files by another name, meaning it's trivial to open the application up and get all up inside its gully works. And after getting inside, I discovered some truly wonderful stuff in there. There's this thank you for ordering, please wait for delivery image that we could never see otherwise. There's this lovely limited time background that would appear in the app of a beach where someone, presumably Miku, has adorably drawn the Domino's logo in the sand. But also, perhaps best of all, I found MP3s of all four pizza-themed Hatsune Miku songs created exclusively in promotion of this promotion. <laughs> Perhaps these songs existed somewhere else in an even higher quality and I just haven't found them yet, but for now, I was just happy to have them back and hear them again. Now, I'm not gonna tell you everything that exists inside of this app, in part because I wanna let you explore it and I don't wanna spoil the surprise, and also in part because I'm not technically proficient enough to understand all of the Unity files and other data that exists in there. But I'm confident that when you, the viewers, get your hands on this stuff, you'll be able to uncover some really neat stuff that I wasn't able to. Heck, maybe one of you will even be able to get the camera and AR components functioning again. A lofty dream, I know, but that would be incredible. And once you do, I hope you send it to twitter.com slash suppermikubroth so we can share it with the world. Yes, I decided halfway through this video that I was gonna make that a real Twitter account. And yes, we only post Domino's Miku related content. So hope to see you there. Speaking of sharing with the world, there was still one major hurdle involved in re-releasing this app publicly. It turns out just having the IPA file isn't enough. The file that Brick and I had gotten our hands on was encrypted with my Apple information, so it would be basically useless to distribute it. For months, Brick and I were stumped on this step, and last week I decided that we needed to call in the big guns. So I went to Twitter and put out the call announcing that I'd come into possession of a quote, beloved old iOS app that is no longer available, and I just wanted to know the things I could do with it. Just a few minutes later, I got a few replies from somebody named Burrito Software, a dude who seemed to really know what he was talking about when it came to this stuff. I learned a lot from this guy, including that in order to decrypt the Domino's Miku app, we'd have to jailbreak the phone with the app on it, meaning I'd have to jailbreak my iPhone 5. Now, my iPhone 5 was running iOS 10, and luckily, it's possible to jailbreak phones running iOS 10 all the way up to iOS 10.3.3, which is great news for us. So I charged my iPhone 5 once again, booted it up, checked the version, and realized the phone I got on eBay was running 10.3.4. Now this was the only old iOS device I own and it had just been rendered useless. It seemed like we had hit a brick wall, but then I remembered. A brick wall. Brick? What about brick? Remember, the guy who kicked all of this off with his group of friends trying to reclaim the app? He might be able to help us. So I shot Brick a message and sure enough, Brick actually had an iPad running iOS 10.3.3. And with that, we were back in business. From this point on, I introduced Brick and Burrito to each other, and they took the reins from there, but boy oh boy was it a bumpy ride. Over and over we encountered major roadblocks, detours into shady websites, errors installing the app cracking software, trouble sideloading the app through the software we were using. It was barrier after barrier after barrier, and I can't begin to tell you how many paths to getting this app into a distributable state were taken up and then later abandoned. It was really disheartening work, so much so that I even began asking myself, why are we doing this? I mean, all this effort for a forgotten, brazenly promotional app, an app that was, if we're being honest, a half-functional shell of its former self now, prone to constant crashes and failed server pings. Heck, it had even been abandoned by its own parent company, Domino's, who decided it wasn't worth the effort to keep it on life support. Was this really a worthwhile use of our time? And then, right as those thoughts began to take hold, at 4.10 p.m. last Friday, I got two simultaneous messages from Brick and Burrito. Suddenly, all at once, it was done. After jumping through hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, we had achieved the unachievable. Brick, with his jailbroken iPad and months of dogged persistence in making this happen, 
Burrito with his deep knowledge of sideloading apps and the inner workings of iOS, and me with my access to the Miku apps license and honestly not much else. These three ingredients held by these three specific individuals allowed us to do something that at one point seemed impossible, to rescue this beloved app long since delisted from the brink of annihilation. Together we were able to re-download this old 32-bit app, salvage the IPA file itself, and then jump through all the necessary hoops to decrypt that file for distribution on the internet. And the result? A painstakingly decrypted version of the app ready for consumption by the general public. All that was left was distribution. But the obvious question was, how? How could we ensure this app would survive forever? I racked my brain, who would we trust with this monumental task? Did there exist an entity who so valued the preservation of internet content, big or small, that they would take up this app under their wing and make sure it lived on indefinitely? And then I realized it, there was. The Internet Archive, archive.org, them, the people responsible for archiving the Miku website and of course millions of others were the only ones I could trust with this task. So I reached out to Jason Scott. Now, in addition to working for the Internet Archive, Jason runs textfiles.com, an exhaustive archive of the web's earliest message boards, and is described by Wikipedia as, quote, an archivist, historian of technology, filmmaker, performer, and actor. I wrote Jason a quick email briefly describing the app's history and the hoops we had to jump through to preserve it, and was thrilled when, less than two hours later, he replied with the following message. A link to a dedicated spot on archive.org's homepage meant specifically for keeping Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku alive. For the first time in this whole process, I breathed a sigh of relief. It was done. The possibility that this app would be lost within our lifetimes, never to be seen again, had now been all but eliminated. And it felt good to know that alongside Jason, Burrito, Brick, and all of his friends who began this movement last September, we had been the ones to do it. So, dear viewer, I'm delighted to say that yes, if you so desire, and if you have an iOS device that's compatible with 32-bit apps, Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku can now be yours. Forever. You might have to jump through some hoops to do it, get ready to install all 10 gigabytes of Xcode and use it to re-sign the Miku app under your credentials, but if you're anything like me, the peace of mind you'll get knowing you've done your part to preserve Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku will be well worth it. Looking back on this process, the thing I keep coming back to is the fact that all of this very nearly didn't happen at all. There were so many near misses, so many obstacles in our way, so many reasons we should not have succeeded or arguably should not have even wasted our time trying, but we pushed through all of that, persevered, and I think in a small way, the world is a little bit better for it.